Maybe you caught the previous video where I first showed this pen. I think it was called Forgotten Footage Unboxing. But if you didn't, no worries. I'll go over the deets now. And yes, I'm using deets because I like it. Never mind that my 21-year-old niece told me not to. Hi, I'm Irene, a 55-year-old Gen Xer. That's one of those blanket, you've been warned, provisos. This is the Twisby Swipe fountain pen. Twisby is the brand, Swipe is the model. The color is pear green and the nib tip is medium. As for price, I've consistently seen it listed at online retailers at around $27. And yes, it comes in other colors. Ice blue, smoke, Prussian blue, and salmon. You know how Barbie dolls come with accessories? Well, this fountain pen came with two ink converters, a regular piston type and a less common spring type. Also included was a rather girthy ink cartridge. There's even a separate spring that can be used to keep the cartridge from possibly disconnecting. Along with the pen itself, all were snuggled inside a securely closing compact plastic case. The amount of thought that must have gone into this packaging boggles my mind. Speaking of accessories, it's dawned on me that condiments are the accessories of food. I'm bringing that up because later on in this video, I'll talk about a recent dining experience. Just easing the way now with a call ahead. Is that the term? Like how in movies and comedy routines there are callbacks, where you refer to and expand upon something that happened earlier. But call ahead would be the reverse. I mean, I guess I could use the word foreshadowing, uh, but that sounds so ominous. <sighs> Don't know why, but around this part I was feeling a bit frazzled and nearly dunked the nib and grip section into the bottle of ink, which wouldn't have gotten me far without an attached converter, piston or spring. But I chose to use the spring converter this first time, and that was the quickest, easiest pen fill I've ever experienced. I read somewhere that the ink capacity is 1.65 mils, which is twice that of a standard converter. Can that be right? Because that's pretty impressive. Full disclosure, this is not my pen. It belongs to producer Mike. For now, anyway. <laughs> not too long ago, I made a stink over the Monteverde Strada. Well, he said I unfairly put him on the spot, and now it's mine. All mine. <laughs> you got a brief glimpse of that adorable bottle of Airban's Vert Prey, which was kindly donated by a viewer. I have a soft spot for Airban. A couple of favorites in my ink collection are their Lee de Te and Poussière de Lune. This Vert Prey might not be one of my all-time favorites, but I think it's a fine ink and an excellent match for this pen. This is from the Jacques Herban Ink Company. As far as I can tell, their main ink line is simply labeled with Airban, or sometimes J Airban, while their premium ink series are labeled with their full name, Jacques Airban. I haven't experienced any of their fancy pants inks, but I find plenty of variety in their standard collection. In my opinion, Vert Prey really nails the essence of fresh fruit. Although I've yet to do a side-by-side -side comparison, it strikes me as more pleasant than Waringal's The Novel Reader and nearly as delightful as Eroshizuku's Chikurin. Producer Mike and I experienced our first time at El Rinconcito. It's a local casual Mexican restaurant chain. Their tagline is, It's so good. It looks like they have a dozen locations here in the Puget Sound area. 
We hadn't eaten Mexican food in a while, but more importantly, they were open late. We each opted for the regular enchilada plate, which includes three enchiladas with your choice of meat and rice and beans. That's like our go-to meal at Mexican restaurants. With other places, it's either a bacon cheeseburger or fish and chips. The beef birria sounded yummy, so we both went with that. Everything was good, actually. The rice was fine, and the refried beans were very tasty. Birria is meat marinated in an adobo, then simmered in broth. It can be served like a soup, or in the case of these enchiladas, the meat is taken from the broth and used as a filling. It was delicious. The meat was fall apart tender, like shredded beef. It wasn't overly seasoned, so we were able to add one of their hot sauces. I don't remember which one it was. Uh, there was a small condiment bar with a handful of options. We picked a chili sauce that was dark red, almost brown. The meal portion size was not disappointing. We both pretty much cleaned our plates, but we felt full and happy. I say pretty much because... Okay, I'm going to share something embarrassing. I like to think of myself as having very few food hang-ups, but the reality is I do have more than a few. Things like raw egg whites, fish heads, and American processed cheese slices. Another is large hunks of fat. Look, I'm not proud of it. Logically, I know when you eat meat, you're going to encounter fat. But before you judge me, consider your own food hang-ups. We all have our bugaboos. I just happened to push one of mine, a two-inch hunk of soft, jiggly fat, to the edge of my plate, without making a fuss, mind. But that was the only thing I didn't eat, and I would totally order that dish again, because the rest was... As they say, so good. But that's not even the end of the story. Because we thought, que demonios, and ordered dessert. A cheesecake burrito that was deep fried and filled with a yummy cream cheese mixture. A scoop of vanilla ice cream and a drizzling of strawberry and chocolate sauces completed the plate. It both looked and tasted so good. And it was the perfect amount for the two of us to share. <laughs> Since this has become an almost full-out review, I'll go ahead and mention customer service. Personally, I feel there's room for improvement. Nothing really put me off. I mean, if I wanted to go down that road, I could tell you about years of consistently bad experiences with KFC. No, I simply felt the Il Rinconcito crew could have been a tad friendlier. Look, I worked in food service a long, long time ago. Things may have changed, but my training put an emphasis on that because with all the choices out there, service can easily tip the scales in a customer's decision to come back or go elsewhere. Maybe that's just me being too critical my overall impression is that El Rinconcito is a popular place that serves delicious food, and there were a number of Latino families dining there, so they're definitely doing something right. Limes, because I didn't feel like sketching a pear. Yeah, limes are good. I mean, I don't have strong feelings about them, really, but I enjoy a good margarita or key lime pie. That phrase there is from the song Coconut, except I misremembered the words, so it's more of a paraphrase than a quote. It's from the 1971 album Nilsson Schmilson by Harry Nilsson. The same album has the famous breakup ballad Without You. As a child and later as a teen, I would frequently go through my brother's extensive record collection, discovering new treasures each time. I remember flipping past the cover of Schmilson, which was both intriguing and off-putting. 
What's with this sad, pasty dude in a bathrobe? Once I got brave enough to play the album, the song Without You immediately became a lifelong favorite. Coconut is more what they call a novelty song. Kind of fun, kind of odd, definitely earwormy. Gotta Get Up is catchy and was heavily featured in the streaming series Russian Doll a couple of years ago. Actually, for a long time, I did not know Without You was a cover. Originally recorded in 1970 by Badfinger, it was sort of a non-event, I guess, since nobody took much notice until Nelson recorded it in 71. The new version became an international hit single and earned Nelson a Grammy Award. It was his second Grammy, actually, because he'd been writing and recording songs for years before that. It took watching the documentary, Who's Harry Nilsson and Why Is Everybody Talking About Him?, to find out that mutual admiration between himself and the Beatles led to lifelong friendships with each band member. In fact, it's been said that Nelson was drawn to Bad Fingers Without You because it sounded like a Beatles song. Now might be a good time to remind you all that likes, subscribes, and comments are very much appreciated. Because without you, I wouldn't be here sharing this stuff. As you view the writing and doodle samples, you may notice something, and that's the shading going on. From letter to letter, and even within individual letters, there is lovely variegation in color intensity. That's shading, and it's probably my favorite of all the fountain pen ink characteristics out there. Sure, shimmer and sheen are cool, but just give me some nice shade and I'm good to go. Until next time, remember, there's a process to everything. Put the lime in the coconut, then drink. Put the converter in the pen, then fill. And stay inky, my friends. <laughs>